How's it everybody and welcome back to another recording of Total War and Warhammer. My name is Psyche. And I'm Sigma. And we'll be taking you through this game. So we decided to do another 2v2 and this will be the last one for now. Uh, but I still wanted to, I feel like we've been able to showcase the Wood Elves and we've been able to showcase the new school of magic, which is the Shadow. Uh, the one thing we haven't been able to showcase uh, till thus far is this guy, which is Morgor the Shadow Grave. Very ugly looking. A very ugly looking guy. Beast Lord. Yeah, a very ugly Beast Lord. But he can summon Chaos Spawn. So that's interesting. Uh, he's got two ways of doing it. One, he just summons them. And the second one is if an enemy squad is below 20% health, he can summon Chaos Spawn out of them, basically. Um, but he loves his Chaos Spawn. He loves his Chaos Spawn. So for this army, I've got uh, four squads of the Gorvers with shields. Uh, two of the Uncle Spearman herds with shields, uh, two Gorbals, and they just have their regular abilities. I have two of the Uncle Raiders. I did take the Bray Shaman of Beasts and I put him on a chariot. And he's got the Summon Wavern and Flock of Doom, Summon Manticore and Flock of Doom. And then I've got one squad of Minotaurs with shields. <clears throat> right, and then uh, Sigma. Yeah, I took inspiration from our opponent. Wanted to try what he did. <laughs> ah, okay. So in the front line, I have three squads of Eternal Guard. Mm -hmm. Behind them, I have seven squads, five squads of Glade Guard, uh, three with the Starfire shafts, and two with the Hagbane. Steps. I was expecting Dwarf. <laughs> ah, sure. I have two of the War Dancers with swords, mm -hmm. two of the War Dancers with staves. Oh, the, oh, there we go. Yeah. With the spears. Yes, to uh, to ward off pesky cavalry. Mm -hmm. And then I have two squads of Deepwood Scouts. Which is my favorite, by the way. They, yeah, they're, they're pretty cool. These dudes are amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Then I have the shooty Alvin Lord on a steed. Right. Uh, Oops, with a Lord. potion of toughness. Yes. All right. And 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 then I have the Floaty Spell Singer of Life. No, she's kind of a Floaty Spell Singer of Life. Look at that. Yeah. All over the place. <laughs> so the plan was to keep the, um, to keep the front line uh, alive so I can shoot them mm. more with my arrows. Sure. Okay. Our opponents for this game turn out to be a Dwarf and a Beastman. So let's go through the Dwarven Armory quickly. So the Dwarf decided to do two squads of... Uh, I think he had two squads of Rangers. He had one squad of quarrelers. He then had two squads of the iron drakes with the flamethrowers. Oh wow. He was he must have been expecting treatment. Which is rough, yep. And then he has Thorgrim the Grudge Bearer and a Runesmith. He has the Warriors of the Dragon Fire Pass, which is always a good idea. He has the Dragon Back Slayers, which is not bad. A squad of Ironbreakers over there. Uh, two squads of Dwarf Warriors. Okay, three squads of Dwarf Warriors. And then two basic cannons. And that's pretty much the Dwarven Army. Our Beastman opponent decided to go with two squads of the Ungor Spearmen. One, two, three, four, five squads of the Gore Herds with shields. And then one Beastie Gore Herd. He also took um, Morgur the Shadowgrave. Yep, and he ended up taking a Bray Shaman of the Wild for Devolve and the Summon Sigor. He then ended up Vanguard deploying, uh, well, this was still in his deployment zone, my apologies, two uh, Minotaur squad with great weapons, two Centigors with great weapons, and then two squads of the Harpies. All right, that was there at the back. And those are the armies. And off we go. So, when the game started, we realized that this chasm thingamathing -a hole, <laughs> which is right there, all the way down. Uh, yeah, it was pretty much going to be um, in the way, and uh, we kind of had to move around it. So, what we tried to do is just position the beastmen over here, um, right out of the range of the cannons, so that it, they won't get hit while the uh, wood elves work their way through the water and marshes all the way up yeah. towards the uh, beastmen. And that was to either shoot at those uh, three squads there or force them to join the main army again. <laughs> yeah, so which then helps us because we could actually end up engaging them from two sides. Spencer maneuver. Yeah, so, so <laughs> either that was going to happen or they were going to have to break off 
uh, the beastmen to come over here. Yeah, otherwise we would take them apart beastmen. Yeah. So um, this takes a little bit, so I'm just going to forward it a little bit for you guys. Otherwise we're going we're gonna to just sit here forever. And uh, you can see, so the Glad Lord is moving up. These guys have decided they're not interested in fighting, uh, but he, Orban, very cleverly moves his harpies all the way around. Okay. And yes, so not much happened. So at this point in time, the Beastman decides he is going to uh, pull his army all the way back. Oh, wait, 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 big rock. <sighs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, Archer goes splat. Uh, he is going to move his army, and the moment I see his army start migrating towards this side to take on the Wood Elves, my army can uh, now freely charge forward into the Dwarves. So we've got some arrows firing here. Um, these Harpies, though, they are going to cause some problems. Yeah. Okay, so you can see here that he's bringing most of his units across. Um, over the little river into the other side and then here we are advancing now so um, I wanted to send these guys forward to draw some cannon fire um, and then see if we could maybe just hit the Saigor a little bit he is summoned so his health is ticking down all the time if we could just get a couple of good shots in on him uh, that might actually help get rid of him very quickly which is always beneficial for us and then here these guys don't take too well they do take damage but they don't take all that much damage from the the range attack over there uh our army is still going forward we have now summoned a feral manticore and he's going to go directly after the cannon over here the front line of the wood elves army they are standing strong there is a bit of a gap here but i think they are going to get caught up there and yeah it's just colorful little rainbow technicolor arrows all over the place the problem here is the centigors with the great weapons are coming from the side and the harpies are coming from the rear yes. oh that is bad all right so this is going to be a tough game for the elves guys uh and i think this is why people end up taking beastmen against wood elf uh in a one-on-one -on -one match it's almost the the most it's going to be the most seen counter pick because they are so good at just getting around getting into the archers yeah, getting into the archer side over here. The Ironbreakers waste a lot of their lost in charges on the Feral Manticore, and that actually damages the cannon crew, which we are completely and utterly happy with. Uh, we are charging in on all fronts. We are trying to get in there. The Saigor is finally now timed out, and he's dying. Uh, and we are basically just sending the uh, Bray Shaman of Beasts and one of the Gorbals after um, the uh, Thorgrim Ranch Bearer, yep, and then these guys are going to work their way through to the cannons, they're going to charge both of these cannons. How are things going on your side, man? <sighs> it's going. <laughs> ah. So we are keeping the main army at bay with the wonderful leadership of the Eternal Guard, mm. while trying to shoot the rest of his army off the archers so I can free them up to shoot at other things. Ah, okay, fair with enough. mixed results. So it's a bit of a it's a bit of a guerrilla tactics going on here where you you broke you break you fall back a little bit you start shooting again you break you fall back a little bit you start shooting again yes it's a good way of <laughs> all right <laughs> and that seems pretty good pretty good all the while spamming the healing spells with your uh, spell singer yes of course okay so or my opponent must think he has it in the bag because he's moving his HQs away. That's yes, that's true. But I think they're only no, they're still chasing the HQ. Ah, okay. So uh, over here. Um, the Gorbul is now running into the Iron Drakes, trying to just uh, get rid of them. And I'm trying to use these ones, ah, there we go, to spawn a new squad of Chaos Spawn. So we managed to do it with our Morgul, the Shadowgrave. Uh, Thorgrim, the Grudge Bearer, has broken and ran off of the battlefield. We are basically moving back and we're centralizing along this edge here. So we have a squad of Chaos Spawn that has been summoned by Morgul. We now have another set of Chaos Spawn that was also summoned from the. Uh, well, remaining little few guys in the Iron Rack squad over here, the Bray Shaman and the Global is still fighting the good fight over there, and our uh, Raiders are shooting. Uh, and as Sigma said, there we go. Yeah, he's, he's pulling away his HQs to come fight the other beastmen. Yeah, so at this point in time, he's fairly confident he's got uh, the Wood Elves on the run, and he um, is going to push them all the way back or at least out of the fight so he can afford to send his HQs over to go help his buddy uh, the dwarf which is not in the best of, of states at this point in time to be honest they are struggling uh, against the beastmen here it's not over yet but 
I mean, this is not gonna. This is not going well for them. So yeah, I did see the HQs running up, so I stationed both the Ungol Raiders here to just take some shots at the Bray Shaman. I just wanted to soften them up before they get here. I do have Gorbals still running all over the place, and uh, I do still have uh, Morgul. Uh, Morgur, which is still at full health, and you can see here yeah, we are just peppering the Bray Shaman here with some arrows, taking a, lot of shots. taking a lot of damage, and he actually breaks even before he gets there, and then due to skirmish mode, these guys are going to start running away, but I do have the Gorbul running in there, and the other Gorbul also running in there. How are things going on your side? <sighs> right, so, um, we are fighting the, <laughs> we're trying to use the Wood Elf's speed, to stay a step ahead of our beastman opponents, but the Minotaurs are just so quick. They are. It's it's very difficult to do. That is very true. Very true. But at least yeah, you're still in the game. You're still alive. You know? It's it's in a manner of speaking, yeah. It's going. Alright. Now that's all good. It's all good. So over here the Bray Shaman is also gonna charge the combat over here. Uh this uh Bray Shaman has run away. I'm trying to just reposition the two Ungol Raiders so I can start taking pot shots at the Rune Smith as he's running around. Uh More the chaos summon spawn. chaos spawn, they're trying to just kill everybody over there. We ended up summoning four squads of chaos spawn, <laughs> I think it, it did happen. Uh, the Ungol Raiders are starting to open up on the Runesmith, which decides it's a bad idea to go that way, so he just turns around, but these squads are now centralizing. Ah, uh, there comes another, another Gaspar. Okay, well. Yeah, uh, they, they just popped out, and then these guys are going to just turn their attention to uh, the Gore Herd that just ran in there, and these guys are just going to use those guys to get out of there. Uh, Your guys are still shooting the crap out of the beastmen there at the back. Uh, the Bray Shaman with his chariot is going after the Bray Shaman of the wild and he should win this fight, this little showdown. Uh, the Morgur of our opponent, his uh, Chaos Spawn Squad finally dies that he brought with him uh, from the other side of the battlefield and over there you can see so our Bray Shaman with the chariot is taking on the Bray Shaman of the wild and he is dying. And on your side things are kind of stabilizing, not really. It's, it, it, it's, it's backwards and forwards. Nah. Okay, yes. so, it's, so it's still very much open-ended here. Yes. Okay, <laughs> no worries. So, the Bray Shaman of the Beasts, he finally manages to break the Bray Shaman of the Wild, but and we are going to chase down. him down until he dies. Uh, over here, Morgur, of our opponent, he is actually uh, broken. Oh, he's taking a lot of shots. But we don't care right now, we are definitely just charging him down with the Gorbals. This one is a little bit behind, but he's getting in there. And then this Bray Shaman with the Chariot is also going to chase him down. We want to make sure we kill them. We don't yes. just want to chase them, chase them around. Uh, the Angor Raiders are shooting at the last remaining uh, Ironbreaker squad, but I did change their target to the Gorfords because they'll have better success there. Uh, Ironbreakers are ex insanely tough. Uh, over here, how's it going? Uh, yeah, the, um, we're, we're routing. <laughs> <laughs> the Minotaurs are just too fast and too, too on us. Yeah, all right, so the Wood Elves are still falling back just a little bit. Uh, yeah, they just got a bit of a taste of what Beastman typically does right. against Wood Elves, and it's, it's harsh. It's not pretty. It's not pretty. Um, but I think if you go like for a full Dryad, tree type army you can take them on. Uh, but with yeah, not not with that many archers. It's it's just not gonna work out. Uh, so yeah we do have some broken squads that should be uh, rallying soon. The iron breakers are giving us trouble. Uh, they, they, they won't kill us, but they are very tough to take out and they do take an extremely long amount of time. So over here the Glade Lord manages to catch the uh, Gore Herd, yes. as the uh, Gorbals are moving their way across, which is very cute. And then, blah! <laughs> so the Gorbul is going to charge in there. I think uh, our opponent was in a bit of trouble here, even the Beastman, even though he got due to he pushed you so far back. Yeah, might have been a bit too spread out. Yeah, I think so. If he kept his HQ on this side, he could have finished off, perhaps, the Wood Elves. Yes. And then he could have come this way, which would have given him a better chance, because currently he's got two Gorbals, a Bray Shaman, and he still has Morgur to deal with. And he's got nothing left that can actually kill them. Yeah, yeah. There's just not enough left to kill them. Uh, the Angor Raiders, they are still shooting at the Angors with shields. They're managing to break the squad, so they're going to start running away. That only leaves the Ironbreakers, but there and we go, guys. Break. So eventually they do uh, break. So there we go. Uh, we've at least managed to showcase the new Beastmen. I haven't showcased the Harpies, but you guys saw it at least from our opponent's side. Yes. Um, how that works. We've been able to showcase the Wood Elves. 
a little bit, which was fun. The sh School of Shadow, which was fun. Um, School and of then, Life. <laughs> the School of Life. And then, of course, the uh, Morgar, which is the new uh, lord for the Beastmen, the Carl Spawning Lord. Uh, and that's it from our side, guys. Well, how, did, how did you feel about that game? I, I can I understand why 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 people default mm. to beastmen when they play against wood elves. Yeah, I think so too. Especially it's, on a wide open map like this one. It's fairly obvious. Um, it's just that they have the tools. Um, if you don't go so heavy on range, I think the wood elves could probably take them in a fight. But yes, exactly. uh, if yeah, if you focus like that on range, it's it's just not going to work out. Um, yeah, so that was a pretty fun game. Worked out well for us, luckily, and. Uh, that's it. That's it for me, guys. I've got nothing else to say. I'm like actually really, really tired. It's like almost one o'clock in the morning. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, sorry for not being too chatty right now, but I am just tired. But there we go, guys. Uh, if you like the content on this channel, please uh, hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate that. Or just leave us a comment, leave us a like. That's always, uh, you know, it's always a good thing to do. Um, any lost wisdoms? <laughs> send us your replays. Oh yeah, send us your replays. Guys, so um, what we're going to try and do is to do either dual cast or I'll cast them myself. Uh, send some replays of games that you think was epic, amazing, stupendous, fantastic. Uh, if Whether you epically won, epically lost, or it was so close that... Uh, we want to know about it. Yeah, we want to know about it, we want to see it, we want to watch it, and then we want to cast it. So if you did something that was really epic and fantastic, send it through and we'll show it to the world. Um, that's it. Email Good. address on your profile. Oh uh, yeah, the email address will be in the description of this video, and uh, uh, you can just send it there, which will be sonicz at gmail .com. Okay, cool guys. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, thank you for being with us here, and then we're gonna see you guys for the next recording. But until then, bye bye. bye.